Oh, lot of writings here. OK, uh, this is just a revision what we got. OK, we in the last class we got one important mathematical relation for the interaction of external radiation with matter. OK, and uh, in terms of Einstein coefficient, OK, like this. Basically, under thermal equilibrium, number of upward transition should be equivalent to downward transition. Based on that, we wrote rate equations for upward transitions and downward transition. There are two downward transitions. These equations we derived in the earlier class and we equated to this equilibrium condition. And then we got the expression for energy density. And then simply rearranging the terms. OK, uh, we started using standard equations how populations would vary or how population in different energy levels are related through Boltzmann equation. We wrote it and we made associated substitutions. This is the final expression what we got in the last class. And once we got this kind of a last derivation and we went back to the theory, theoretically and not only theory, experimentally basically. OK, when they measured radiation. OK, according to Planck's law. The radiation whose frequency nu. OK, depends on. The temperature of the body. Big T. OK, and they are related through this relation. This relation we took it as it is. And then we compared left hand side equation. What we got it in terms of Einstein coefficient with respect to standard equation. And we started comparing both of them. The coefficient of the entire bracket term we compared it. Then we got an expression for this. And the coefficient of B12 by B21, whatever we are having it, the corresponding coefficient for exponential term alone is one here. Therefore, we got this expression. And then with this simplification, we got the final expression for energy density in terms of Einstein coefficient. Guys, is it clear up to this point? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. OK, yes, and sir. then uh, based on this final expression. OK, we started because there are two downward transition. One is once atom goes to higher energy level, it either it undergoes similar stimulated emission or spontaneous emission. Then we consider these two cases. Let us take the ratio of these two emissions. OK, that rates ratio of rate of stimulated emission to that of spontaneous emission. Then we understood that it is given by B21 by A12. And in terms of this equation, we wrote it in this way. And finally, we got the next expression by making substitutions for this. OK, we got an expression which claims that OK, R21 star by R21 finally depends on the ratio of N2 by N1. What do you mean by R21 star? What does it indicate? R21 star? Anybody? What does it indicate? R21 star? Hello? Nilekani, what is mean by what is the meaning of R21 star? Hmm? Anyone else? Stimulated emission. Stimulated emission, sir. A rate of stimulated emission. Okay. It is rate. Rate of stimulated emission to 
through the rate of spontaneous emission that is r21 star is rate of stimulated emission it is directly proportional to n2 but according to maxwell boltzmann equation always n1 is greater than that of n1 n2 right is it not lower energy levels will be having more number of atoms compared to higher energy level therefore by default n1 is more than that of n2 therefore what happens if this ratio becomes less than 1 that mean to say stimulated emission is less dominant compared to that of spontaneous emission according to this expression therefore if i want to go for amplification amplification can occur only for stimulated emission not for spontaneous emission i have to make sure that r21 star should be greater than that of r21 see here by default it is n2 is higher number this is lower number compared to that for example if i am having 100 atoms in the ground floor i will be having only 90 atoms in the higher energy level therefore this becomes 0.9 that means that r21 star is less than that of r21 by default but what i need to have that whenever atoms go to higher energy level they should undergo stimulated emission not spontaneous emission they should not come back immediately if i want to make that to happen okay i need to make sure that in either case my n2 should be always higher compared to that of n1 but this relation maxwell distribution law tells that this n1 more number of atoms will be in the ground floor i think i gave the analogous example in the previous class is that more number of students will be in the first year rather than the second year okay that's why somehow i have to make sure that okay i have to make sure that n2 is more than that of n1 that process the way we make it to or the process by which we make n2 more than that of n1 we call it as population inversion up to this point we had discussed in the last class right anybody is having any doubt here no sir okay then this is the physical significance of that the proportionality a to 1 is proportional probability of spontaneous emission okay and b to 1 is called probability of stimulated emission and b12 is probability of absorption or induced absorption these are all einstein coefficients this is the physical meaning okay which one dominates okay and according to this is the same old relation it is sort of a summary okay the dominant process will depend on the virtual number of atoms in the upper and lower energy state as per this maxwell boltzmann equation okay more the population in the upper energy level obviously we will be having more stimulated emission to occur now along with that what are the other fundamental requirements if i want to get a special light like laser first one is i need a lasing medium okay and second one is the basically lasing medium we are going to discuss it later case okay please write down this is also another important question okay what are the fundamental requisites of laser okay the first and foremost is i need a lasing medium okay second one is i need to have a population inversion in that lasing medium okay and guys did you get the first two points hello yes sir. are you writing these two first two points are all these points hello yes sir okay and this uh, third point is i need to have metastable states in the lasing medium 
that is the third point please write down we are going to discuss at length about individual points in the upcoming slides and then i need to have a box okay that we call it as a resonant cavity okay that lasing whenever i want to expect it i need to keep it in a box that box we call it as a resonant cavity okay and these are the fundamental requirements for lasing action to occur okay we are going to discuss one at a time at the later case since we just now discussed about some point where if i want to have r21 star divided by r21 is directly proportional to n2 by n1 okay therefore i want to make sure that my system okay in my system i need to have more number of atoms in the higher energy level compared to lower energy level this is my requirement okay therefore in a given system i need to have the population inversion and if i want to have the population inversion okay somehow i need to have the i need to have that particular type of material should have metastable states okay now let us concentrate on these two concepts first and later we will come back to this lasing medium as well as this cavity okay now let us try to understand what do you mean by metastable state okay the necessary condition for laser action is that the number of atoms in the higher energy state must exceed the number in a lower energy level as i mentioned previously n2 should be greater than n1 if i want to expect a lasing action now that is directly related because of this relation what we derived it now hey is my voice audible guys yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. Okay. what uh, i have to do by default more number of atoms are in the ground state therefore i need to go for population inversion population inversion is the condition having the population of higher energy state greater than that of the population of lower energy level that means that initially by default i will be having five atoms here and three atoms in the higher energy level according to maxwell boltzmann equation but by doing the population inversion i am making sure that these two atoms i will send it upstairs then due to this population inversion i will be having more atoms in the higher energy level compared to that of lower energy level that condition we call it as population inversion okay more atoms are in the higher energy level compared to that of lower energy level that is population inversion it is called an inversion because in many familiar and commonly encountered physical systems it is not possible to have this kind of a system in the sense inversion means naturally what is there with us okay it is hard to make sure that more atoms in the higher energy level compared to that of lower atoms that's why we are using that i am reversing the process reversing the natural phenomena that's why we call it as an inversion and in laser system how do we achieve this population inversion the population inversion is achieved by the process called pumping okay basically i am pumping more atoms to go to higher energy state from the lower energy state that's why population inversion is achieved by pumping and let us keep this pumping concept clear and uh, please write down that what is pumping okay population inversion 
the power pumping is the process by which one can achieve population inversion or in other words population inversion can be achieved by the process of pumping now let's try to understand what do you mean by metastable state okay <clears throat> the lifetime of an atom or a molecule in the excited state is crucial in determining whether the transition is undergoing stimulated emission or spontaneous emission okay and please remember that this is the lifetime of an atom usually whenever we consider this energy level diagram okay usually the excited atoms are commonly having lifetimes only of nanoseconds okay this is the excited state will be having nanoseconds time the moment atoms go from lower energy level to higher energy level within the fraction of second that is even fraction in the say 10 to the power of minus 9 seconds within that time these atoms start jumping back to lower energy level that we call it as spontaneous emission in most of the systems whatever the material or matter we have considered okay excited states will be having less lifetime that will be having nanoseconds and within nanoseconds they come to lower energy state by emitting radiation that we call it as spontaneous emission and this period whatever this nanoseconds period is not lengthy enough to likely undergo stimulated emission because atoms are going to higher energy level before i make sure that the external radiation will hit them and they absorb that energy and undergo stimulated emission thereby giving two photons okay that we call it as stimulated emission if this excited state is less lifetime or that excited state is having less lifetime then this entire process cannot happen therefore i cannot expect stimulated emission if the excited states are short lived states guys are you able to follow up to this point hello yes sir okay now a critical requirement but as we understood laser means light amplification by stimulated emission okay therefore the critical requirement for stimulated emission to occur that means stimulated emission to occur means for laser to occur laser action to happen a critical requirement for laser action therefore is a longer lived state that is suitable for the higher energy level i have to my given system should have a state and that state's lifetime should be long lived or the time over which atom can spend in higher energy level should be much much longer period than that of nanoseconds okay a critical requirement for laser action is a longer lived state that is suitable for the upper energy level and such states do exist only in certain materials and those kinds of long lived states are called as metastable states okay whatever we have instead of having nanoseconds this excited level will be staying or the atoms which come and occupy this excited state will be staying for longer period that we call it as metastable state one minute please average lifetime before spontaneous emission occurs for a metastable is on the order of microseconds to millisecond 
and as you know that nanosecond means 10 to the power of minus 9 seconds this microsecond means 10 to the power of minus 6 seconds millisecond c is 10 to the power of minus 3 seconds which one is bigger 10 to the power of minus 3 is bigger than that of minus 9 right is it not guys hello is it not which one is lengthier microsecond or nanosecond hello can you follow me are you following yes sir ah, which one is bigger which one is long time milliseconds or nanoseconds huh? millimeter it is 0 0.001 second microsecond that means that 0 0.0000001 second which one is bigger which one is bigger number i say millisecond millisecond is okay it can stay in the excited state for longer period therefore more amount of time it can stay over there okay therefore our metastable state is that in that state atom can stay for 10 to the power of minus 6 seconds or 10 to the power of minus 3 seconds depending on the given system okay they can stay over there for little longer period okay This is one of the schematic diagram of metastable states. For example, let us consider a system, okay, which is having a three level system. That means that there is a ground state level and there is an excited state. There are two excited states, but not all excited states will be having a lifetime which is higher. See here, this is the ground state and once i make during the population inversion okay i make atoms to go to higher energy level they go to higher energy level but this state is the time period of this one is 10 to the power of minus 9 seconds within fraction or the within nanoseconds time they jump back to lower energy level then at this point okay but this stay this is also an excited state but here atom can stay up to 10 to the power of minus 6 seconds okay compared to 10 to the power of minus 9 this is 0 point after eight zeros one will be coming here but here after five zeros one is coming here therefore this one is little lengthy period compared to that of short lived higher state therefore in this state there is a in this particular one of the representative diagram okay this atom can stay in this state for little longer time at that point okay atoms i am just making atoms to go to higher energy level and then they come down to this level and anyway i will be having more atoms in the beginning to begin with and all of them will go here and they come back here by the time there is only two atoms are left here approximately there are four atoms or six atoms are present in this excited state therefore i have more number of atoms in this state compared to that of this state then stimulated emission can occur among the metastable state and the ground state there are two requirements i am talking about here one is the state should be or the given system should be having a metastable state and also i need to have a population difference between these two state more number of atoms should be there in this state compared to that of lower state this is one example for three level system there are certain systems okay there is sort of you can consider this is one type of a laser 
okay there are another type of laser where i have four energy level systems okay at that point this is the ground state and then i excite them to higher energy level and then this is a meta stable state and then here atoms cannot stay for longer period they move to another intermediate state where that is a meta stable state where atoms can stay for little longer time this is 10 to the power of minus 6 seconds but here it is only 10 to the power of minus 9 seconds i hope all of you are able to appreciate the difference here this is nano means less time 10 to the power of micro means little longer time don't compare with our usual notations okay this is microseconds this is nanoseconds even much much smaller okay therefore here atoms can stay for little longer time at that point i make the tectonic radiation to hit the atoms thereby coming down to lower energy level okay and then population difference can exist between higher energy level and lower energy level and then lasing stimulated emission occurs among these two energy levels and i get laser out therefore this picture okay i am not getting into much more details right now it is just to imagine that in a given material like your piece of chalk or pen or whatever the material where external radiation is interacting okay the number of states and uh, the sum of the states excited states can be metastable states or unstable states okay we are choosing a right type of material to make that material to act like a laser okay here i have taken two examples these are only representative examples therefore not uh, my interest is to make you understand that okay which one is meta stable state which one is unstable state it purely depends on the system i have to choose right system okay for a particular application okay all of you understood the difference between meta stable state and excited states see all whatever the energy level above this ground level they are all excited states okay among see 1 2 3 there are three energy levels here uh, apart from this ground state but not all of them are meta stable states this is an unstable state only this one is meta stable state okay in this case in the left hand side the top one is unstable state but intermediate state is a meta stable state okay guys have you understood this concept meta stable state hello yes sir yeah meta stable yes, sir. state is a state at which atoms can stay for longer time that's all okay therefore let us now try to understand the pictorial representation in words form okay most of the atoms or molecules are initially excited to a short lived high energy state and that is higher than the meta stable state we do it and from that state they quickly decay to intermediate meta stable state which has much much longer lifetime than that of the higher energy state this is 1000 times that is 10 to the power of 3 okay and uh, higher excited state is having 10 to the power of minus 9 seconds and this intermediate state is having what do you mean by 1000 10 to the power of minus 9 into 1000 what is the value 10 to, to the power of yes this is 10 to the power of 3 therefore it becomes 10 to the power of minus 6 seconds okay that's how this becomes 10 to the power of 60 seconds okay this one is meta stable atoms can stay for longer time okay and because each atoms residence time in the meta stable is relatively long the population tends to increase and leads to a population inversion between the meta stable state and the lower ground state this is ground state okay these two are excited state okay but this one is a meta stable state 
this top one is an unstable state okay unstable in the sense relative this meta and the un are relative terms okay and here atoms can stay for longer time and here the population difference has occurred between these two states okay and the ground state is continuously being depopulated to the higher higher state because whatever the atoms we are having here okay i am using a population inversion making these atoms to go to higher energy level always this number is decreasing and this number is going up therefore always i will be having more atoms in this state compared to this that's we call it as population inversion okay and at that point whenever i have more atoms here compared to that of the lower energy level i can expect stimulated emission because more atoms are in the available in the upper excited state and also in that upper excited state it is a metastable state as well okay and hence okay i am expecting stimulated emission among these kinds of energy level system where i have more atoms in this state compared to that of the ground state okay this is ground state these two are excited states but this is short lived state this is long lived state and that's why we call it as metastable state also and between these two population inversion is has already been occurred then i can expect more stimulated emission to occur <coughs> guys have you understood this concept completely this is very important concept hello yes sir now let us try to this is all about the meta stable state let us try to solve one of the problems please all of you write down write down this statement of the problem write down the ratio of population of two energy levels okay i have two energy levels okay the ratio of population what is the general notation we use this is n2 and this is n1 if i consider this as e2 and e1 okay e is so and so number find the wavelength of the light emitted at 300 kelvin okay what information he has given how do we solve this problem hello guys what formula i have to use yes who can suggest as yes, guys how do we solve this problem yes hello i cannot hear your voice ah what formula i have to use what information is given to me Uh, how do i solve this problem yes you have to tell me how do i solve this problem shreya
Yes, sir. Yeah. What formula I have to use? Sir, is it uh, n2 by n1 is equal to uh, exponential to the power minus e uh, e2 minus e1 by lambda kt? Yeah. You are right. What is the what do we call for that? What equation we call for? The Boltzmann factor. Yes, Boltzmann Maxwell Boltzmann equation. Yes, that is the correct formula. OK, we have to use this. Maxwell Boltzmann formula. Maxwell. men formula because they have given population of two the ratio of population that is n2 by n1 they have given okay and then they have given what is the other term they have given temperature ah uh, how do we do this e2 minus e1 what has been asked what we have to calculate aman Aman. Yes, sir. Ah, what we have to calculate? <clears throat> Ankit. Ankit, it seems that you might have switched it on. We are not able to hear your voice. Yes, Saman, I did not get the answer. Huh? Yes, Shreya. Shreya, what we have to calculate? We have to find the wavelength of the light emitted at that temperature. <laughs> Yeah, what is the notation we use for wavelength? Lambda. Lambda. But uh, how do I calculate lambda from knowing this n2 by n1 I know and I know temperature, right? Only these parameters are given. How do I calculate lambda then? Where is lambda in this formula? Hmm? Are they? Karyan? Sir. Ah. Tell me. Yes, tell me, how do I calculate lambda? Hmm, check your notes. Yes, we are. Uh, instead of uh, writing E2 minus E1, we could write it as uh, HC by lambda. Yes, that is E2 minus E1 wherever we are having. That is basically the energy difference delta E. OK, and delta E is given by H nu. OK, and what is H? H is same Planck constant nu can be written as C by lambda. I know H is constant, C is constant. OK, therefore in this term I am left with only lambda. My job is to find out lambda here. OK, therefore what we do. We try to write this expression first. Our job is to eliminate this exponential term in the formula. What we do it? We took a natural lag that is lan log to base E for this formula. Then lan of N2 by N1 is just becoming this value can be written as delta E as it is. When I once I take the natural log, okay, write that take 
LAN on both sides. Okay, then it becomes LAN of N2 by N1 equals minus delta E by KBT as it is. Now in place of delta E, let us write HC by lambda. That's I was mentioning about. Aman, are you getting? Yes, sir. Yeah. Then once we know that, well, what we know is that H is constant, C is constant, Boltzmann constant, KB is constant. Let us take this entire ratio or these terms away from that. The only parameters N2 by N1 depend on is what is the wavelength and what is the temperature. Okay. Now, uh, substitute the values for this HC by lambda. All of you should get this number. Please try what is H value, what is C value and what is KB value. Write this, do this calculation. What is H value? Yes, what is the value of H? Aman, what is H here? Hello? S1? What is H in this formula? Ardik? Ankit? We are not able to hear you. Shreya? What is H value? Sir, it's 6.626 into 10 to the power of minus 34. Ah, 626 into 10 to the power of minus 34. What is the unit? Joules. Joule second. And then what is C? What is the value of C? 3 into 10 to the power of 8. Uh, what is the unit? Meters per Meter. second. And then what is KB? Uh, what is KB? Shreya? Sir, it's Boltzmann constant. Uh, what is the value of Boltzmann constant? 1.3 into 10 to the power minus 23. 1.38 into minus. Power. Ah. What is the unit? Kelvin, sir. Joel per? Yeah, tell me. Joule per? Yes, sir, is there? you have to tell me. Huh? Hmm. Joule per Kelvin, sir. Joule per Kelvin? Okay. Now, you got the term right? All the parameters you are having it. Hmm? Okay, and then HC by KT. Now let us take out C here. Dimensionally, let me write it joule second meter per second denominator again joule per Kelvin. Okay. Joule and Joule get cancelled with each other. Second and second inverse cancel with each other. Therefore, we are left with 
meter kelvin in the numerator itself this kelvin goes to numerator okay that is meter kelvin now uh, do this simplification of this calculation that is basically 6.626 into 3 divided by 1.38 here let us write the 10 to the power of terms 34 plus this is minus 34 plus 8 how much how much minus 34 plus 8 minus 26 minus 26 in the denominator we are having minus 23 ah do this calculation how much you are getting? Zero point zero one four four, sir. Zero point. You know, basically, when I did it with my calculator, I am getting 14.4 into 10 to the power of minus 3. That is equivalent to writing 0. Point, this is minus 2, minus 1, 0. That is 0. 0.0144. The unit is meter Kelvin. Okay meter kelvin i got it guys all of you are able to get this number up to this point yes Hello? sir yeah yes, this sir. one we have given just for your information so that whenever we ask this kind of question in your objective type question like mcq you can remember this number hc by kb is given by this all are constants. You can directly substitute this value in the formula and you can quickly calculate what is the lambda value. Okay, now go ahead and substitute this HC by KB value. Therefore, finally, we are left with ln of N2 by N1 is given by so and so. Uh, can I delete this? Whatever the text I have written. Yes, sir. Okay, at least this much I will delete it. Okay, do the calculations now. Now I have simplified version of the above formula. Okay, now I am looking for what are the values given by them. Okay, they have given N2 by N1. This value they have given and they have given t value and what is left with me is that my job is to calculate lambda therefore lambda can be written as lambda is written as this minus 0 0.0144 divided by ln of n2 by n1 into t okay i have rewritten the formula now i am making the substitution what i have done I am retaining the same term in the numerator and in the denominator I have ln of this value is given here 1.059 into 10 to the power of minus 30 and temperature value please re this one oh uh, I, my final answer here I have taken 300 please make it as 330. Okay, my final answer might differ. Please cross check that. Ha, do the calculations. Amar, Aman, you have to give me the answer now. Yashwan, I don't hear your voice. Hello. 
what happened to others hmm i don't hear your voice guys shari yashwan karyan aman who was talking yes, aman you are the one right yeah tell me the answer aman do it take your own time but you have to do it Uh, anyone uh, any of you have come to the college today yes your what is the final answer here i am seeing 696 nanometer did you get the same answer Ah, what is the value of lan of one point zero five nine? Zero point zero five seven, sir. Hmm. Ah, uh, what is the value you got it? Lan of one point zero five nine. I just want this answer. Minus sign is already there. Ah, uh, what is lan of this value? Shreya, can you tell me? Yes, sir. Uh, I calculated for it completely, including ten to the power of minus thirty, and uh, we get uh, minus sixty nine point zero two. Yes, this value is minus sixty nine point zero two. Now multiplied by three thirty. Okay, so I got and here. Ah, nine into ten or minus. Five. Sorry, sir. Six point nine into ten to the minus six. With minus sign. Ah, uh, one minute. Ah, uh, with minus sign. Please remember. Uh, look at this. The way we did it. This minus and minus get cancelled with each other. Hello. Yes. Ah, uh, so. Hello. Ah, uh, oh, Aman, no. look at that. This is minus and minus because lan is having minus ten to the power of minus thirty. That default that becomes minus. Minus and minus they can cancel with each other. Therefore, we are left with zero point zero one four four divided by sixty nine point zero two multiplied by three thirty. Ah. Aman, you told me that to accept this minus sign. What is the final answer? You got it. Six point nine into ten to the power minus six. One minute. Six point. Six point nine into ten ah. to the power minus six. Minus. Six. You got minus six. Yes, sir. Hey, check it once again. 
Shreya, yes, you also got this? Yes, sir. Minus six? Yes, sir. I got the same answer. 6.31 into 10 to the power minus six. Right. It cannot be. With the 330? Yes, sir. I'll re yes, I'm sir. recalculating it again. One minute. Okay, I am getting this value. One minute, let me do this. Okay, one over. Sorry, let me do this. Zero point zero one four four. Divided by a different answer. Sorry, I got a different answer, sir. Now it's uh, six point three two into ten to the power minus seven. Yeah, this one I am getting for three thirty six point three two into ten power minus six minus seven, right? Yes, sir. I got that one. Yeah. Now what I do? I shift it to right hand side. Then it becomes, if I shift this decimal to here, that becomes minus 8. If I shift it here, that becomes minus 9. Therefore, this becomes 632 into 10 to the power of minus 9. Okay. And here, what we are having it, this term and this term, the units of this term is meter and Kelvin. Okay, here for the temperature, I have Kelvin. Kelvin, Kelvin cancel. Therefore, I am getting meter as the final answer. And 10 to the power of minus 9 meter can be written as nanometer. Therefore, for 330 Kelvin, we are getting 632 nanometer. Please do it for 300 Kelvin also once again. Just Make one more calculation at instead of 330, you now you substitute it for 300 and tell me what is the answer. Sir, we get 696 uh, nanometer. Yeah, I think whatever the calculations I have done it here is for 300. Whatever the printed version. Okay, for 330, 632 nanometer. Aman, Yashwant. Yes, sir. Ah, are you doing the calculations? Yes, sir. Got this answer? Yes, sir. 632 for 300 and per. 330 Kelvin, 696 for 300 Kelvin. Therefore, this one, whatever Aman told initially was wrong. And Shreya, why both of you made the same mistake? Sir, I uh, first I divided the the value I got with the temperature and later on I multiplied so that gave a different answer. No, it cannot. Do it once again. Whatever the way you do it, you should get the same answer. You can try once again so that you get the confidence whether you do it this way or that way should lead to same answers. Yes, sir. Ah. Do it for the 330, 300 Kelvin also, both of you, Aman.
this how about others i am not hearing any voice from others there are 17 students i didn't know i thought only 5 students are there all of you got this answer yes sir i got the same answer sir okay uh, can you move on or someone if someone is still working on it please treat one experiment for 330 kelvin other uh, one uh, problem another one is for 300 kelvin as you can see okay the population is population please here, see here if population uh, sorry the temperature is decreased what happens to the wavelength see here yes temperature is decreased 330 kelvin to 300 and uh, 330 kelvin to 300 kelvin okay that's what we are doing it right 630 this is for 330 kelvin okay and we are moving to 300 kelvin okay wavelength increases okay as temperature decreases wavelength increases here though don't try to connect it immediately okay all of you got the answer yes sir okay now what did we learn so far okay compared to so far what are all the discussions we had it okay we understood or at least we defined so far is that laser light unidirectional and those light rays are parallel and these light rays will be having same wavelength monochromatic and this light ray are coherent because whenever we are expecting stimulated emission to occur okay this impinging photon this photon's frequency or phase is equivalent to that of this photon as well as this photon okay this is incident energy and these are the outgoing energy or outgoing photons okay this photons and this photon and this photon all three photons phase remain same or there is a constant phase difference among these three photons that's why they are coherent in nature and we also learn that the population of atoms with given energy e is given by that is given energy difference e1 and e2 is given by n2 by n1 is given by this formula just now we solve the problem also and whenever external radiation interacts with matter okay that can interact with matter either in the form of absorption as spontaneous emission or stimulated emission and as usual absorption and stimulated emission can occur only in the presence of external radiation okay this is external radiation and spontaneous emission is incoherent what is the meaning ah what is the aman what is the meaning of incoherent aman what is the meaning of that uh, these two statements what is the difference between these two statements spontaneous emission is incoherent stimulated emission is coherent hmm? now what is the difference who can answer i am not seeing in my mobile phone because i don't want to disturb the regular class okay ashwant sir ashwant is suffering from fever sir 
Sorry? Yashwant is suffering from fever, sir. He couldn't answer that. Who? Yashwant? Yashwant, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, sir, who is talking? Karyan, right? Yes, sir. Ah, Karyan, what is the difference between these two sentences? Last sir, two sentences. Uh, Incoherence means uh, it's not in a uh, definite or stable path, sir. Uh, since for, uh, while it, it is in the spontaneous, uh, the laser won't be in the in uh, stable or uh, stable relationship with the other. One, what do you mean by stable? Can you just uh, dwell upon it? Uh, Anyone? Shreya? Sir, uh, here incoherent refers to the thing that uh, light waves, uh, they won't be in a uh, same phase. They'll have different phases during spontaneous emission. Yes, that is. They are not in phase. That means to say if one photon, okay, all of them will be having same energy H nu. There is no variation in the energy possessed by individual photon because of this transition or this transition. But what happens if one photon is moving in this direction, okay, another photon is moving in another direction. Whatever Karyan, uh, repeat your sentence Karyan. Let me try to correct your sentence. It is not in a defined path or a stable path. A stable, ah. stable relationship. Yeah, you have to use that coherency whenever they ask. Okay, you have to talk about the phase. Yes, okay, e either all yes, these photons will be having constant or there is no phase difference between these two photons or there is a constant phase difference among these photons as long as they move also. Okay, that we call it as coherent. In stimulated emission, because all these atoms are, because they are jumping back to lower energy level because of the incident radiation, you knew all of them jump at one time, then all of them will give out photons at the same time. Therefore, all of them are core. Uh, all of them are coherent in nature and all the photons are in phase. It is, I think on that day, I was explaining in the pictorial wave representation, all these photons, I can write it this way. Okay, yes, all of them are starting at the same point. This we call it as coherent. In this case of incoherent, one is moving in this way and other one is starting from this point and moving and another one is uh, that will start off of this way and move this way. Okay, therefore I cannot expect coherency among these two photons in spontaneous emission, but here all of them are moving in same phase. You got the point, the major difference between spontaneous emission and stimulated emission? Yes, sir. Okay. Next, after that, what did we do? Okay, and uh, the special features of this laser is light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation and special features of stimulated emission is that direction of emitted photon is same as that of the incident photon. Please remember that one also. Not only because of this downward transition, photons are emitted, they are in phase, they are also in phase with the incident photon also. Okay, this photon, this photon and this photon, all three are in phase. And the emitted photon is in phase with the incident photon and all of them will be having same polarization as that of the incident photon. And whenever all these photons are moving in phase, I can make I can amplify these kinds of photons, okay, and that is the amplification of the incident photon. We will consider that how do we do that in the next slide or in the next class, okay. Amplification can be done whenever these photons are in phase. 
and then since all of them are moving in the same direction i can they form a directional property and whenever they are having directional property i can make them to concentrate at one particular target and then intensity of the light is predominant or dominantly high for laser compared to that of the ordinary light okay guys got it up to this point hello yes sir okay now that's uh, those that, that's all what we had discussed so far can you move on to the next topic or we will take a break now what do you suggest hmm what do you guys suggest huh what shall we do shall we take a break or we will move on yes, sir break sir break okay majority is break aha i heard more voices for break okay okay then we will stop at this point okay and uh, we will